What's up, people? It's your man, Urban Lover, coming from somebody else's basement. I snuck in. They kicked me out. It's all good. I'm still in their cable, and I'm going out the backyard, jumping in somebody else's car. I can hot shot it and get the hell out of here. Anyway, what I want to talk about the game last night, I was going to make a video um, prior to yesterday, after the game was over, like I had put on my Twitter feed. But based on the fact that the game was so... <laughs> Irrelevant. I just I fell asleep after the game. I was just too tired. I just I wanted to really just basically I was just trying to take in what Luke was trying to do. Now, but like I said, I'm gonna give y'all my my final um, analysis on the game, well all the games so far, and I'm, it's not too much of a different from last year. That's basically basically the whole truth. I mean, if you look at last year and you look at this year, it ain't too much of a difference. I mean, just different faces, the same strategy. Ain't too much going to change. Luke Walton is going to run his second unit, first unit bull crap, and I don't really don't like that. I know a lot of fans um, are, are are with it, and also some are against it. Me personally, I told you guys before, I didn't mind it last year to a degree. Only I think that they should have did a little bit more better, like the time management, um, just just basically the overall coaching of it, you know. And now I'm looking at it; they already do the same thing. I'm based on what Luke Walton said at. Um, LakerNation.com. I watched the video and he was talking about like about you know um, individuals starting at the power four spot or just spots period. And it doesn't any about them can score or do this and do that, but it's the other little tangibles that they can do, how well they mesh. I agree to a degree with that point. The only reason why I'm saying this at the end of the day is this: your first your first unit should always be your best unit, not your second unit. That's the most weakest um, observation or just conversation period that somebody can put out is, is real weak when you have your second unit much more strong than your first unit we went through that last year with deandro and nick young they knew what to do knew how to stop them same old strategy teams once they learn the outcome of what to do in order to play these guys everything went downhill from there when we started out we was like 10 or something whatever it may be looking good you know but when scouts started paying a little bit more attention or just defensive um strategy um defensive um you know, coaches and all that start looking at the X and O's and all that. Okay, here we need to do to stop these guys. Now, I'm going to say this real quick. Now, I'm not going to say that this is what the line might be like, but the starting five so far from what I'm thinking, it's going to be Brooke Lopez, Larry Nance, um, Brandon Ingram, KCP, and Ball. If that's going to be the lineup, we're going to lose a lot of games. I'm just being honest. I mean, we can get... We got to look at it from a non-biased standpoint. We can't be so quick to say, oh, well, you know, because of the Lakers, we're going to win this and that. I gave them 35 games. I still do think they're going to win between 30 and 35 because they're going to probably beat some games here and there, but not as much. And the only reason why I'm saying that because if you look at the Lakers squad, we don't really have no shooters. And I've been saying this on over again. You got to spread the floor. You can't have a whole bunch of slashes on, on one lineup. And if you look at their starting five, all of them are streaky shooters. Even Brooke Lopez, streaky shooter. Brooke Lopez... He might have a nice outside, outside shot, but he's not really potent inside. You know what I'm saying? So, Larry Nance, it will work with Larry Nance, you know, but the biggest thing about that is this, is that I would rather have Julius Randle playing at, you know, starting at that power four spot. And y'all know I'm a big Larry Nance fan. I love Larry Nance, you know, but I think that Julius Randle should start that power four spot. I said in my last video, you know, because Brooke Lopez, you know, he's outside shooting, shooting shots. We don't really have a, um, a double-digit rebounder. I mean, if in that starting five, we don't have a double-digit rebounder. Brooke Lopez is not known to rebound. He's not a good defender. He's not. Good. He's 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 kind of like not really mobile. You know what I'm saying? So he's not a. I mean, he's okay. Don't get me wrong. He can get 18, 20 points. And I know they're going they're going to have a regular run a lot of plays for him through ball. Well, you know, ball setting him up for a lot of easy shots and stuff like that. But then after that, you really don't have no 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 consistent shooter on that, that starting five. Brandon Ingram, yeah, he had a good game, but let's be honest. Who did they play? They played the G League. The Clippers had all their main players sitting down. You know, the Lakers came out. That's why I wasn't really hyped about the game because once they announced that they're going to be mostly G League players, it was like, okay, well, what are we looking at? Basically, right now, all I was looking at is the other players coming off the bench and seeing what they can, you know, seeing what they can do. But that's only one game. You can't just go by one game and say, okay, this guy going to be pretty good. I will say this about Man of Blue. I told y'all guys before, I know y'all hear the noise just because I'm in the city. And, you know, like I said, I'm in somebody's basement. I had to creep in. And there's a big truck right there. You know, that guy. Anyway, I don't want to get off, off, off the point. Man of Blue, I said it before and I said it over and over again. This guy does not impress me at all. Uh, other people might impress them, but it doesn't impress me. You now, why somebody got to be running a dirt bike? You can't even make a video out of it. You know, somebody cutting grass. But anyway, please annoy the, annoy the, the sound. I got to be cutting. Oh man, God! 
Look, I'm going to pause this and I'm going to come back. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm back. You know, it was a lot of noise guy cutting his grass. But Van and Blue, I told you guys during the um, Summer League, I wasn't really excited about this guy because this guy reminded me so much of Jordan Clarkson in his younger, not in his younger younger years with the, with the Lakers, but probably like his, probably like last year and the year before that. Not the first year. The first year he was doing a lot of passing. But I'm not really impressed with Vander Blue. The only reason why I'm not impressed with him is because he does not pass. Simply put, he's like, he's trying too hard. You know, he's coming to the game. There were plays where he could have actually made extra passes. He chose not to. He chose to go to the basket. And there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, you don't have to be so aggressive to the point where it actually hinders you. And I'm not just going to, you know, pick on him. I just like right now, I'm at the point that Lou Walton need to figure out what it is that he need to do. I know, and, and you know, you have some fans coming there because Kyle Kuzma didn't have a good game, you know, last night. Oh, he's trapped, blah, blah, blah. That's only one game. I mean, let's be honest. Let's not be hypocritical because in, in reality of it, how many bad games did all those guys have? You know, let's be honest. How many, you know, you can't just pick and choose your water. You know what I mean? You got to see what water you want to drink and go with it. But anyway, I still think that Kyle Kuzma should start, and I think that Brandon Ingram should start at the two. I know somebody said, well, KCP, we, got, we paid him $19 million, you know, he got to start. He don't really have to start. He's only signed on a one-year contract. He doesn't have to start. He's not really showing me nothing. You know, he can come off the bench with Jordan Clarkson and uh, Caruso can, you know, rotate in between that, however they want to do it. But I personally, I will put out what's best and beneficial to the team. You will need shooters on that starting five or ball is going to be, to put it like this, if you don't put nobody out there that can shoot with ball, nine times ten, what's going to happen is that a lot of fans are going to turn on him and say, oh, ball suck this and that, you know, he can't get shots off, you know, he can't pass. Because you're looking at the squad that's just going to start with him, none of these guys can actually shoot. So it just it just makes it even worse, you know what I'm saying? So second unit, that second unit, like right now, the, the, I mean, in reality, you got to have the first unit got to be, it got to be the stronger unit, you know. And like I said, Kuzma should start, Brandon should be at the two, ball at the point. Brooke Lopez, Randall, you know, um, and then you rotate whatever you get off the bench. I already told y'all in my last video who I would bring off the bench, but knowing Luke, he's going to go with that first unit, second unit bull crap. Uh, I don't know how you're going to uh, rock the minutes. I hope you don't rock the minutes like he did last time. I don't think Magic and them are going to let him rock the minutes like he did before where everybody get 25 minutes. That's not going to happen. The average starter should, like I said, get 35 minutes. And... That's starting that start five. If he go with the starting five that he choose with Larry Nance, Brooke Lopez, um, Larry Nance, Brooke Lopez, um, Ball, Ingram, and KCP, that, that's going to be like a real serious, uh, it's going to be a real serious um, problem. So, like right now I'm looking at the stats. And, and just, just looking at the stats, and, and they, had, they struggle against the freaking a G League squad. You know, and everybody say, well, you know, it's the pre, it's the preseason, all that. Listen, I don't care if it's the preseason, summer league, whatever. At the end of the day, everybody's playing for a contract. Everybody's playing for an opportunity to get starting spots, roles, everything. You know, when you go out there on that floor, that's the whole point. The preseason is a prelude to who's going to start, who's going to get the minutes, who's going to be role players, what is what. You know, when they get a chance. So when they get into the, uh, when the actual season start, a lot of people ain't going to make it. Some people are, and then some people are going to be playing according to what they can um, contribute to the team. So when somebody sit there and say, well, the preseason don't count, it does count. It might not count as wins and losses, but it count for those individuals because it's a business. And these individuals are trying to make spots. You know, if you look, the Lakers got like almost 20 players. So many players didn't get to play. So, I mean, you look at it like, I mean, with that starting five, you know, um, Ingram and Lopez with the two. Enos ain't do too much, but like I said, Enos ain't gonna be starting. You already know that John um, Ball is. I was gonna say John Ball. Uh, Lonzo Ball gonna be starting. You already know that, but I mean, it's probably brand new best game. You know, I mean, this beyond it was probably best game, but it's against once again a G League. Just like when you look at the preseason, not the pre I'm sorry, the summer league. When he had that first game before he got hurt, remember he went off against those G League type players. You know what I mean? But when he played against these these actually star players, this is not going to happen every game. He's going to be a streaky player until he actually come into his own. And this is why I said that he would start the um the two. Like when I played my NBA um. 2K, I'm really switched to NBA Live too, because NBA 2K, it's just, it's too, I don't know, man. It's just, I don't want to get into that. You know, for those that are in, in NBA 2K, I don't get that. But my NBA, my, when I when I play my video games, 
I put Brandon Ingram at the two, and I run with John Ball at the. I mean, I keep saying John Ball. I run Lonzo Ball at the point, and Brandon Ingram, you know, at the two. Um, and, um Julius at the um power four spot. Brook Lopez at the center, and uh, Kuzma at the uh, small four spot. Now Kuzma, he can't shoot on the game. Hopefully, uh, with updates and all, he probably will. But that's why I run. I mean, that's how I look at it. Cause I, the thing is that you want to spread the spread the floor. You don't want everybody crowd out low. We had that thing with um. The year before, we had um, Robert Horry, um, Robert Horry and Julius Randle and Larry Nance. All them guys piled up down there. And uh, um, what's the other guy's daggone name? Um, I can't think of his daggone name. But all them piled up down there. You know, um, Brandon Bass. Then we turned around last year, almost similar. You know, we had um, Mods Government, you know, and, and Julius and Larry. You know, same thing, you know. But Mods could shoot just that nobody was giving him the ball, you know. And I mean... You know, he could hit a 15-foot jumper, but they just didn't utilize him. And then he started, you know, it got to the point where, you know, um, uh, Walton would actually run that, you know, small ball offense. And he'd probably get like 11, 12 minutes, 20 minutes here and there. So, it, you know, really was utilized. And I wasn't a big fan of Miles. I'm not a big fan of Luau Dang. You know, I mean, if I made a rant about that, but that's that's the past. At the end of the day, I, like I said over and over again, I give the Lakers a C. That's it, I give them a C. Because I'm really not seeing too much from them. Defense still look the same to me. The interior defense sucks, uh, you know, and, you know, people can disagree with me all they want, but the interior defense sucks. Brooke Lopez, like I said before, is not a good defender. Never was when he was in Brooklyn, not a good defender. You know, if you don't believe me, go back and watch the video when Larry Nance posterized him. Went right to him, you know what I'm saying? So he's not a good defender. And I'm just not saying that he's not going to play defense. You know, it got to be a team effort, you know. And at the end of the day, Brooke Lopez is not that proven defender down low. Perimeter defense still suspect. I mean, these G League guys were doing, you know, freaking stand in the game. They, you know, the Lakers should have blew them out. I mean, you got to think about it. It's going to be your starters. And let's be real. These are going to be your starters besides Lonzo Ball not being there. These are your starters. And the freaking G League pretty much almost took the game. Took them to the wire if you want if you want to call it. I know a lot of people say, well, the last couple of minutes, you know, they just, you know, they had uh, Caruso and all those guys on there. You know, some of the other guys. It don't matter. Because if you think about it, some of these guys that that was actually in the game that, towards the end are on the roster. They're going to make their off. They're going to be on the roster. They're going to be in the rotation. So once again, we're going to be seeing the second unit outplayed at the first unit. Because if you look at the second unit, most likely going to be freaking uh, Zublock, um, Zublock, John Clarkson, um, Eva uh, Caruso, or um, um, a Hart. It's going to be one up to either Caruso or Hart, um, Brewer, Larry Nance, like that. And that, that, no, no, I'm sorry. Because, uh, because, um, I forgot they're not going to start Kuzma. They probably don't. So it's going to be that the city will be, um, um, Zublock, Zubak, or whatever his freaking name is. Zublock, like I said. It's going to be Zublock, Larry Nance, Kuzma, Hart, and, um, Jordan Clarkson, and in that rotation with Caruso. Somewhere, I don't know how Enos going to play that. Or it might not be hard. Uh, Joel Clark might play the two. And Enos or Caruso might going to play the point. Hard probably don't get no playing time. He probably come in if somebody get hurt or something. But that's what it's going to be like. And if you look at that starting five, the second unit, the second unit going to always look better because, number one, they're playing against most teams' bench players. And most teams only have, they're going to probably only go two or three deep, as in good players, I mean average players, that it pretty much can score or do whatever. So they're not going to be as strong. So the Lakers' second unit always going to outshine the, fir the first unit. And I think that the first unit should always be better than the second unit. We should not be going through this like we did last year. You know, here come the bench squad and all that other crazy stuff. I'm not I'm not caught up in that hype no more. I, I, one thing at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching and I observe Magic Johnson and all of them because everybody was so hot on with Jim Buss and um, Mitch Kupchak. They were beating them down and all that. I'm going to do the exact same thing with Magic. And, and, and I'm a big Magic, Magic Johnson fan. I watched them. I grew up off Magic. I, my game, when I used to play basketball, but I was kind of idolized behind Magic Johnson. I'm no longer a big idolizer. But the thing is, at the end of the day, is that I want to see what Magic Johnson and the front office have up their sleeve. Um, I want to watch and see what they do. I'm not going to be so quick to say, oh, yeah, I'm not going to be biased. Put it like that. You know, I'm, I'm going to observe the games as they go. And like I said today, I'm also going to be watching Lou Walton because I feel, though, if Lou Walton doesn't do nothing next year, not this year, probably next year, depending on what we get because, you know, we do have enough money to get two free um, two free agents if they go that route. If he don't do nothing next year, that would probably be his last year, something like that. You know, um, I just, like I said, I'm not really excited, man. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the season to come, 
but I'm not really excited for what's to come. I don't really think we're going to be that good. I just don't. I don't see really no shooters out there. Everybody streaky players, streaky, um, streaky. They're inconsistent shooters. The defense is still a suspect. You know, a lot of breakdowns. You know, no, you know, bad rotation. And then, like I said, I know it's only preseason, but you know, preseason also show you what you're gonna get in the regular regular season. And like I said, you know, and if Lou Walton go with you know Julius Randle off the bench, you know, um, how he choose to do it, you know. And I said, I said Larry Nance will probably start, but they they gonna go with Julius Randle off the bench. And that's why I said the second unit gonna be better than the first unit. Cause Julius and Jordan Clarkson and Kuzma are gonna kill that first, that second unit. They gonna freaking be, they gonna probably get more playing time than the first unit. That's the crazy part. But I don't know. Matt Johnson might put a put a stop to that. We'll see though. But anyway, uh, you guys tell me what you think, what you take so far from these preseason games. What do you um you grade the Lakers so far right now? Remember, it's only the preseason. We're not gonna jump the gun. I mean, I kind of jumped the gun only because I'm watching and observing what what I'm seeing, and I'm not gonna try to be biased. You know, I, I'm I'm. Not disappointed because I love every year that Lakers play, period, whether they sorry or not. I just think at the end of the day is that, you know, sometimes you got to play guys towards their strength. And I think that Brandon Ingram shouldn't be playing small forward. I think he'll be better at the two. He can shoot over players. He can post players, you know, them smaller players up. You know, he's a better defender because he got the long wingspan. So it will help him develop his game much better. But playing a small forward spot, I can see him getting hurt a lot. I mean, like, you know being physically tired, banging bodies with them big guys down there, and them guys taking them, backing them up, you know, or, you know, just basically just giving them body, giving them body work, you know, because after a while, that takes a toll on the body as well. So, I don't know, but we're going to see what Luke Walton will do, you know. I just want to, I'm, I'm so happy to see the start next next week, and i like to see what we're you know, we going to bring to the table. But I'm just happy, I hope Luke, Luke Aldane don't play. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, you know, nothing against Luke Aldane, but, you know, it, I just don't want to see that dude play. You know, I ain't got him against him, man, but... It is what it is. Anyways, your man, Urban Lover. Like, share, and subscribe. Get in the comment section. Give me your ratings and what you think the Lakers going. What you get the Lakers so far in the preseason. You know, let's be honest. Opinions are opinions. We all have disagreements. We all have different opinions, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we all have one goal, and that's to see the Lakers get back to top of dominance. And as long as we ride together, we roll together, you know how we do. Anyway, y'all take care. It's your man, Urban Lover, signing out. Not coming from your mama's basement. I, I actually jumped into the the um the Herbmobile or the Black and East Mobile. I finally got that word right. Y'all have a blessed one. Take care. I love you guys. Be safe out there and don't get caught up in the crazies.